Hi guys, um, today we are going to be talking about active transport. Um, so we're still focusing right here on this second objective where we're looking at the methods of transport in cells. So active transport is a method of moving molecules across a membrane from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. This is all done through transport proteins and always requires an energy input from the cell. If you think of when you're being active, you're burning energy. So active transport requires energy to be performed um, in the cell. And that type of energy is A, T, P. So we'll leave that there. So right here, we have low concentration, high concentration, but we're still using energy to pump those molecules or ions across the membrane. This happens through the use of transport proteins. Transport proteins must change shape in order for our solute or our, so our chemical to pass through the membrane. Most transport proteins will change shape and that changing of shape is actually driven by chemical energy. As this molecule binds, it signals that it needs energy to open up the doorway to let them in. An important reminder for transport proteins is that in active transport, they all require chemical energy in the form of ATP to move substances against the concentration gradient. Naturally, things want to go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until they are equal. But in active transport, we are going from low to high concentration. There are two main methods of active transport other than the use of transport proteins. <clears throat> Endocytosis and exocytosis are both transport mechanisms that use vesicles to move those large objects across the membrane. Endocytosis is the process of taking in a liquid or a fairly large molecule into the cell by engulfing it in the membrane. Endo is taking in, so consuming. The cell membrane makes a pocket around the substance. It breaks off inside the cell. And lysosomes and lysosomal enzymes will come out to break down the vesicle to release that substance, whether it be food or liquid, into the cell. Visually, we pinch our membrane, pinches off, and we get our vesicle, and then lysosomes will come in and break this down. Vesicles are made up of the same double layer of phospholipids, just as the cell membrane, and it's how we can create these vesicles so easily. Depending on the type of product that is being brought into the cell depends on what type of endocytosis it is. The primary one is phagocytosis. This is a type of endocytosis that's considered cell eating. The cell will engulf large particles of food and this plays a role in our immune system. If we're looking at phagocytosis, this is just food molecules, not liquids. Here is that white blood cell consuming a virus. This is how our body stays healthy in our immune system. Our host cell will come in, consume the virus, and then break it down so we don't get sick. A lot of times, though, viruses are stronger and can reproduce faster than our white blood cells can attack them, which is how we actually get sick with things like viruses. Exocytosis is the opposite of endocytosis, and it's the releasing of substance by fusion of a vesicle with the cell membrane. So exocytosis exits the cell, exo-exit. 
A vesicle will form around the materials in the cytoplasm, either from production from the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, anything like that. A vesicle forms around them. The vesicle begins to move towards the cell surface and it fuses with the membrane while letting go of its contents. Visually, here's our vesicle formed nicely. It begins to fuse with the cell membrane and then it's released. The benefit of having vesicles that can fuse with the cell membrane goes to the fluidity of the cell membrane. If cell membranes were hard and rigid like plant cell walls, this would not be able to happen as easily as it does in animals. So our vesicle can fuse with the membrane and then pinch back off from the membrane as well because of the fluidity of plasma membranes. This is happening all of the time in your body and you don't even realize it. If you ever wanted to tap your big toe, your brain sends a message down a series of nerve cells until it reaches its end destination, which in this example is your big toe. This message travels along each nerve cell as an electrical signal and gets converted to a chemical signal to cross a tiny gap that separates one nerve cell from another. This signal travels from cell to cell through vesicles until finally you are tapping your toe. Here's a quick video for you guys. This is just a wrap up um, of what we're talking about today. Um, so this is linked in Google Classroom for you guys. And that is the end of chapter three and the end of active transport.